remember the quote, we either <clears throat> stand together now or we hang separately. Now enjoy a bunch of interviews and my take on the entire trip at Ferguson, Missouri. That's Ferguson Court, or the police station and the courthouse right there. This is Pete Wicker reporting live from Ferguson, Missouri. And uh, my intel just told me that I don't think we're going to get a verdict. Here's some protesters, officer friendly, right here. And that's what it's all about. We got to come together as a society. And uh, we got to come together as human beings and, and, and brush this aside. I know it's hard for the family, but we, uh, let the facts come out and then everyone should pass their judgment. Here we have the Ferguson Fire Department building. Right here. And this is where the verdict was supposed to go down today at the Ferguson Courthouse, which is also built in to, as I zoom out here, built into the police station, so hopefully uh, this guy gets his justice. Exists in the state of Missouri. It says also that the Missouri State Highway Patrol together with the St. Louis County Police Department and the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department to operate as a unified command to protect the civil rights and ensure public safety. And it says also that the St. Louis County Police shall have command and operational control over the, over the security of the city of Ferguson, Missouri. And also it talks about the executive order will be in effect for the next 30 days unless uh, something else happens to change that. So uh, they're gearing up. We know the St. Louis County Police were out there last time with myself, Joe Biggs, Josh Owens, and the rest of the crew were on the ground in Ferguson. And they were tear gassing people, shooting rubber bullets at people. I had a chance to speak to the police chief, and he told me that, yeah, we made some mistakes and we hope to do better next time. So it looks like they have next time is now. Uh, they're up to bat. They'll be uh, assuming control uh, according to what we see here. And also we see that DHS has had a, a heavy presence here. We saw, of course, the, uh, the Marine who reported seeing the DHS trucks at a nearby facility. So we'll see what happens with all that. You know, they have... Uh, Everything in place, I would imagine. You know, it's been a long time since the uh, initial incident with Mike Brown. Oh, I have to stop. Okay. You said Marine. Oh, what happened? Navy. Oh, he was Navy. Oh, I thought he was a Marine. No, Navy, but. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Let's do it again. Yeah. You see your glasses again, Henry? I didn't take them off. Okay, yeah. I'm going to upgrade this layer. Okay. One, two. This is Jakari Jackson reporting for InfoWars.com. We just got news of a state of emergency. This is Executive Order 1414 signed by Governor Nixon. And it says, uh, Governor Nixon of the state of Missouri, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution. And it says, I hereby declare a state of emergency exists in the state of Missouri. And also, he's going to have the Missouri State Highway Patrol together with the St. Louis County Police Department and the St. Louis Metropolitan Police to operate as a unified command to protect civil rights. It also says that the St. Louis County Police shall have command and operational control over the things going on in the city of Ferguson, Missouri. Now, of course, we've seen the St. Louis County Police. They were out there, rubber bullets, tear gas, aiming guns at people in the crowd. I had a chance to speak to the police chief the last time I was here, and he said, you know, we made some mistakes. We'll do some adjustments. It looks like they're back up to bat. So we'll see what happens uh, if those changes are going to be made, if they're going to make any difference. Of course, you know, we're waiting to hear what's going to happen with uh, Officer Darren Wilson. Is he going to be indicted? Uh, we were at the courthouse earlier today. There was a protest, I guess about 50 people or so were out there. And, you know, they just want to find out what happened to Mike. You know, of course, we hear a lot about the, uh, the violent protesters, the rioters, the looters, 
the people threatening to come in and burn down the city to loot and pillage and all that stuff. But you can't forget that you also have peaceful protesters, peaceful demonstrators, and they're being uh, very much overshadowed by all this threat, threat of violence. So we hear about these guys. Also, DHS has trucks in the vicinity. We've been told by a military sources who lost his job because of uh, releasing that information. So stay tuned to InfoWars.com. We're here. We're ready. Uh, we're going to be out in the streets as soon as the verdict happens, and we'll give you more reports. Stay tuned. InfoWars.com. On my way back uh, from talking to some individuals, which we're going to play right now, who were right by the police station and still got their windows bricked, so that shows you something. I came back to find Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson making that video, and I thought we were definitely going to be in a police state because they declared uh, technically martial law and federal control. So why did they do this and not pull the trigger? And <clears throat> that's one thing I, I mean, I everything seemed to be set up so I'm gonna play the interviews with the rest of the residents and let you hear what you know was almost like a consensus with the, the people of Ferguson who again are great people and my interview coming up will break that down and it's it's very powerful and emotional but the people in Ferguson treated me great and I love the people out there, and I feel guilty that I'm not down there fighting. And I encourage everybody who's within uh, driving distance to get down there and become citizen journalists. Because you know what? It could be your town next. It could be your family next. We got to stop this police state before it can even rise. All right, my, this is Pete Wickert, and I'm with, what's your name, bro? James. Man. James Pete. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I always the truth is stranger than fiction, and I'm just trying to get your take on, on the current events, basically. I mean, it don't make no sense what they did to that young man, you know, in Ferguson. You know, it really don't. No, no. And, uh, he shouldn't really get off, but it don't make no sense of how people run around trying to like they own property, you know what I'm saying? It don't really make no sense. You gotta run around here boarding up stuff, and, and you know if they gonna turn up something. It hurts the business. Right, it hurts the business. They gonna turn up something. They need to be in Ferguson with at the courthouse. At the at the you know what yeah, I'm saying? Turn yeah. up around there. You know. What I'm I saying? agree. So, well, they didn't. You know, the people that started all of this. That's where they need to be for real. Yeah, yeah. You know, not over in their own little neighborhood turning up everything. You know what I'm saying? It was costing us money to do this. Look at these big holes in the window. Yeah, stuff, man. We got to come over here and board this up. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, this ain't even, helping nobody. This ain't helping nobody, man. Look and and this ain't even the area. Too. This ain't even the area where, you know what I'm saying, it be, you know what I'm saying, where the people that started all this happened at. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. This is in the wrong area. You know what I'm saying? Look around here, Now, man. you think it's people you from, know, like, St. Louis right. coming down just trying to, you yeah, know? you know, it's bad enough. We ain't got nothing as it is. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. be doing all of this, you know, spending more money. For something that, you know what I'm saying, we ain't even really got nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and then you gotta and pay, then, you gotta right, fix it. we ain't it. getting no money back from, from this thing, man. We're coming out of our own pocket and fixing this stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, so and, and not right. the best point you said, bro, is that burning down your own city ain't gonna do shit. Yeah, you know, why nothing, why you know? don't they just surround the courthouse? Right, in the police station. In the you know police station. Don't from. let that motherfucker right. in there. You know, don't let it. Let him get away. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the same the tip, you know. Area, you know That's how we would do it in Chai, man. You know. You know? Don't do it around the whole the, the part of town, that, you know what I'm saying? Do it to where it started from. That's one thing I gotta admit yeah. about Chicago is we, we would go to the police right. station, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not letting people in this police station, you know what I'm saying, to, to talk about what's going on and that, you know, they're avoiding all of that, you know, so turn it up and make them, let, make them let you in, you know what I'm saying, you can turn up some out there, over there in the area where the police originally from, then there's people who actually took yeah. them, you know what I'm Yeah, then, then you got your right. revenge, you all down on you're just hurt, and yeah. the stores that you go to and all that, yeah. And, and then there. people ain't gonna want to build stores right. back. So, you know, what you gonna have in your neighborhood after you turn up everything? Where you have to go? You have to go farther 
you know, do your little shopping. Yeah, which costs right? more, gas, you know, all that. Yeah, all of that, man. I you mean, know? it's all cool to, sh you know, everyone should be pissed about this. No one deserves to die right, like that. Know, you know, man. we got a, a legal system, the courts, uh, try right. let it play right. out. Don't kill, we have, you can't execute someone, right. you know. You know what I'm saying, you're trying to do what's right, you know what I mean. You know, like I said, over there, where they turn up everything at, that's where they got to shop and do, you know what I'm saying. Now they got to go farther, you know, they got the people around their board and all that stuff up, where they can't come and do their shopping now, you know, because they mm -hmm. tore up everything, you know. Yeah, and, and you don't know if they're really open, bad. you don't know, yeah. yeah they look bad over there because of all of this stuff, man, you know what I mean? That's why I'm down here, man. I'm trying to get to the people, you know right. what I'm saying? If shit does it, and it looks like this guy is, is going to get off. They could do some protesting peacefully, man. Yeah, you know and effectively. More, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And they end up getting stuff still, get something done, you know? How long have uh, you lived here in Ferguson? Well, I, I haven't. I, I've stayed in Ferguson for a little while. You know, my mother stayed in Ferguson on New Florida. She stayed close to the police station. There's yeah, no I was just in the parking lot there, and yeah, yeah there's there's, there's nothing going. But yeah, man. So what was your first take? Were you down here the one that all hell was breaking loose, or? Yeah, I, I was watching on the news, man. I went out there. You know, yeah. I didn't have you have thought about conceal and carry after since this? No. No. You, know what you don't want to leave, to leave the evidence. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Because the only reason I'm saying that is there's a couple buildings right by that quickie mart that right. are intact, and one of them's the gun shop because they came out, you know, right. strapped, and, yeah. and that's what saved the the shop, you know, because right. they'll move on to an easier target. Mm -hmm. But shit like this. This yeah. is un uncalled for. It is, man. What is this proving to anybody, people? I'm not proving that, man. It's proving that, you know, this should be in the police station or courthouse. That's where it should be. <laughs> okay. You know. See, I told you I'm real, man. <laughs> I'm not even. I got nobody. No. Nobody telling me what to say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get that next. This ain't the only place, man. Go on West Boston, over there. They got a lot of stuff boarded up where they looted and stuff the first time over there. And then they burnt the quick shit down. Yeah. No sense, you know. No. Nah. You know, them people got insurance on their stuff, you know. They're saying? making money. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're making money off of something that they doing, you know what I'm saying? They don't make no shit. Now nah, they ain't got nowhere to go get no gas but farther, you know. Yeah. What I mean? Yeah. So we need some leaders out here, man, you know what I'm saying? And now they got the KKK and the Black Panthers coming in, and, and it seems like they've been the media's egging this on. To a racial, it's like a racial problem. When everyone I've talked to, it's a cop problem. It's the way the police are treating people out here. Would you agree? And then after that, uh, one of the cops just started shooting up young guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, afterwards, they right? They were baton or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or a stun gun, you know what I'm saying? They just gunned them down, man. Yeah, you yeah, and saying? a gun after. Like, they didn't right. fucking learn their lesson. Right. Yeah, that's you know, some, that's some crazy no shit. Either, you know what I'm saying? No, not at all. These young people, after all of this that happened, like, it's going to make it better, you know, ain't doing nothing but making it worse, man. All right, I got, yeah. I got one more question. I know it's cold as hell out here. All right, go um, ahead. What what's a message for like the kids, man, that are might, are gonna see this? You know what I'm saying? Kids, man, shouldn't even you know take you know what I'm saying. Take heed to all of this. You know what I'm saying? You know, and kind of like like look the other way and wait for it to be in history. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna be in the history book. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh that, yeah. Uh, incident. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just like the LA, uh, the Watts they riots. Really uh, let, they shouldn't really let that affect them. You know what I'm saying? Or what happened? You know what I'm saying? It's great to read about it, you know what I'm saying? Try yeah. to make things better, you know, instead of worse, you know. Don't yeah. Go take after them looting and all of that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It ain't gonna help nothing, man. Nah, like you said, they got insurance, right. and, and they're probably gonna get you. And they're probably gonna get you. They're probably gonna get you too on camera eventually, right. you know. But hey, uh, I appreciate it. I, I really do. And any final thoughts, man? Man, they ought to just come to some kind of agreement, man, you know what I'm saying? To have those guys, you know, do some kind of time, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, let them get off, you know, just like that, you know, because it's not going to be right. You know, that's just making it. Setting an example that cops could. Yeah, and they're already out of control. We don't need to set that example. Yeah, just make it worse, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I agree.
But all right, man. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you. You too, man. Good luck on your little Yeah, I'm about to head back out to, to Chicago. All right, one more time. You're there for, I just want to say, this is Pete Wicker from The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. I'm interviewing, what's your name, bro? Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. And he was here for Looters Night. I just want to get his take. During Looters Night, everybody was frustrated. This is not a uh, incident where it's a one-time incident. Ferguson has a history of racism. Yep. This is the reason out of 53 officers, only three of them were black. Only two of them was on patrol, the other one was a death officer. Yep. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, not only does Ferguson have a history of racism, the state of Missouri has a history of racism. This is actually the last state to join the Union. Yeah. It's been a stronghold for uh, rebels uh, for, for years. From yeah, Justin J. Justin J. That's everybody that uh, was a rebel that fought in the Civil War after the war and they lost. They came here. They came here. Yeah. The reason they came here is because they can have the shelter. Yep. And, and, uh, they can harbor them. Yep. So this is a result of an ongoing um, problem with Ferguson. And, and, and it's and, police. And, 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 and it's police. And what do you feel about the media making it into like a race issue? Because here I am. I'm white. I'm walking up and they're telling me I'm going to get killed if I come down here, you know? They're trying to make it seem like it's a race well, issue. Well, well, the well, thing is, is... is it is, in a sense. It's the history of playing yeah, white against the black. It's not like all you guys want to do is kill white people. No. <laughs> you know, that's like what we're here getting... Yeah, exactly. And, and what I was saying is that, basically, I, I have a couple of friends out here. Everyone's telling me uh, the same thing you said. It's uh, the police. It's historic. The police state. Yeah. You know, uh, Missouri has only... One of one of two police forces that actually ran by the state. Oh. So this police. That's Ferguson, court, or the police station and the courthouse right there. This is Pete Wicker reporting live from Ferguson, Missouri. And uh, my intel just told me that I don't think we're going to get a verdict. Here's some protesters, officer friendly, right here. And that's what it's all about. we got to come together as a society. And uh, we got to come together as human beings and, and, and brush this aside. I know it's hard for the family, but uh, let the facts come out, and then everyone should pass their judgment. Here we have the Ferguson Fire Department building. Right here. And this is where the verdict was supposed to go down today, at the Ferguson Courthouse, which is also built in to, as I zoom out here, built into the police station, so hopefully uh, this guy gets his justice. Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Pete Wicker from the Truth to the Stranger Than Fiction, <clears throat> and I'd just like to thank everyone uh, for your emails, your thoughts, your wishes, your prayers. Um, it meant a lot to me, but to be honest with you, I have to say right now that, you know, I, unfortunately, I, I, I was only there for, for two days. I took a shot in the dark on when, uh, based off a source on when I believed that they were going to release the verdict. And uh, to be honest with you, I had talked to a lot more people than my footage shows. A lot of people did not want to be on camera. And the people there, man, I feel sorry. I really, really do. See, I must have interviewed 75 people. And I'm not exaggerating. <clears throat> I'm, I'm guessing about 75 people. And each and every single one, each and every single one of these 75 people all said the same thing. That the police force 
is predominantly white, and if there's a thing called affirmative action, which there is, and uh, whether you agree with it or not, it's a law. And uh, also that it's a historical issue there in Ferguson. This has been going on for a while, and that you get harassed to go get groceries. That they're preparing us for a police state, and they're preparing the people of Ferguson for a police state. On the way up, I saw armored vehicles. I mean, I'm talking, I saw more cops, more police officers than regular civilian cars once I got to Ferguson. There was one protester who you'll see on the, the video I have, I have a picture of, uh, is sticking up for an Officer Wilson, one person. And Joe Biggs and Jakari went over to the other protest for, in favor of Mike Brown. And maybe 30, 40, 50 people at the tops, I think closer to 40, Joe and such. Joe Biggs from InfoWars.com. Again, I'd like to thank him and Jafari Jackson. It's awesome meeting you guys if you're watching this. But the cops outnumbered the people. That is never necessary. In a free country, we're going to have more cops than we're going to have civilians. That's when we know people that there's something wrong with us as a society, as a civilization, as a culture. Because... They just want to, the people in Ferguson just want their lives back. They just want to have a peaceful weekend like you guys are probably going to have. But they can't because the geography in Ferguson basically surrounds them. So they are surrounded by the Mississippi River. goes, And they can just block off one end. And they block off, the police block off one end, the people of Ferguson are trapped. Uh, a lot of the buildings, as you've seen in my videos, are destroyed. Some are closed. So how do they get food? Uh, I mean, and the, just think about the, the necessities of life that are being restricted when they went into martial law. And when this does happen, and Wilson gets up, you're going to see... Uh, you're going to see the cops escalating this because the people there, you know, regardless of what happened at this point now, they don't really care if Mike Brown had a gun. No one should get gunned down like that. There's, or you cannot, as a cop, be judge, jury, and executioner. Just can't happen, okay? And that's why we have, uh, we had a great country is because the legal system, the courts, and uh, what happened to that? When is execution called for? And not only called for, it seems used routinely now by police. So I think Ferguson points out a microcosm, a bigger issue in society. It points out the fact that, like Jesse Ventura says, we, we like to give up our, our freedoms for security and you know as the founding father said uh, those willing to do that deserve neither those willing to give up uh, their freedom for security don't deserve either or and that's the truth and the people in Ferguson they don't need no security they were peaceful and I'm going to be honest with you right now. Average person on the street in Ferguson was a, each, each guy, lady I interviewed on off air was a better person, a nicer person than most people I meet here in Chicago. And I'm sorry if that offends somebody from Chicago, but I'm trying to make a point. The point is, through all the crap they're going through, here, here, no, here's this white kid that shows up. Oh, and I'm listening on the radio, okay? And trying to hear any information. I hear, if you're white, don't go in this area, in this area. And 
uh, I wasn't very familiar with the area, so I didn't know exactly uh, if I was headed uh, near there or what, and I didn't give a crap. And sure enough, I ended up right near those two streets. You know what I did? I left my car running, I walked around, and I tried to talk to every person there. You know why? Because I care. Yeah, I, I saw in these small business owners' eyes the, the devastation. The devastation done to them. Their whole life gone because they, they couldn't afford insurance, a lot of them. And the bigger corporate you know, stores, they can. They may even have uh, made money out of this. I'm not saying that they wanted it to happen, but that they didn't lose everything like a great deal of people, a great amount of people did. And I, I mean, I just I can't say enough about the resiliency, the strength of the people of Ferguson. And, and it was a pleasure meeting everyone out there that I did, and I, I really learned a lot out there. I learned that you know you take a five, four hour, five hour ride however long it was by yourself out to a place because you you think you know that a uh, police state is there you're trying to help people you know and that whole ride I'm thinking man what if this is it what if this is a civil war right here and I got there and it was so peaceful the only people driving around like maniacs or the police. The only people that didn't release everything right away were the police. If, if Mike Brown did have a gun, and if he did, why didn't he use it to rob 7-Eleven? Why didn't they come out the footage? I mean, just show the footage. The officer Wilson would have been in the clear from day one. So something ain't right. I'm not mad at the police department there. As a matter of fact, they let me park in the parking lot. I, you know, had an overall good experience with everyone. But my point is, there's an inequality there. There's only about 30% white. There's only thir uh, there's 30% white police officers, whereas or African American or black officers, whereas there's 70. The rest of 70% roughly is white. And historically, here been a very uh, racially tense area, I guess is the way to put it. And it's similar to, you know, not far from here in Chicago, we had the Bernie Green, and they had uh, housing projects there. And there's, you know, similar to Chicago, it reminds me a lot of Chicago, a diverse group of people getting along, getting together. And, and it was beautiful to see. Now, why do you need more tanks when you have protesters? What kind of message is that sending? These are good people. They're showing stuff on Fox News from the, the right after the day that Mike Brown passed away. I mean, my God, the propaganda machine is in full effect, people. Do you not see it? Tell me you do not. Because they said that I shouldn't <laughs> go anywhere near anyone around this street to this street well, I walked up and down left my car running and people uh, said don't I shouldn't you know you shouldn't leave your car running every person talks some on air some off air and every person said the same thing the police came in our neighborhood <clears throat> pointing guns escalating things now they got armored vehicles they're going to have guns. They did, uh, just recently, uh, the report I have up on the Truth is Stranger and Fiction on uh, YouTube page, you can find that uh, Pete Wicker, that's my official page on YouTube, uh, Jakari and uh, Joe Biggs doing the report. They uh, It's a state of emergency. Like They made a great point. Who's in charge? Obama? So I thought, I, I feel great. Well, we have a drone attack. No, is it FEMA? Is it, who is it? I'd like to know. I challenge somebody out there, and you know, the military, somebody out there in 
its former military. Tell me who has uh, jurisdiction there. And isn't it just the Ferguson Police Department? And who the hell, what's the pecking order? And who the hell's in charge? I'd like those questions answered. Because what I saw was abuse of power. I saw intimidation. They even tried pulling that with me when they see me interviewing people. They drove around the block about five times giving me dirty looks. Well, guess what? It only made me try to interview more people. I was having camera problems as well as many other problems driving down there. It was not a good luck day for me, but I still went there. And I, in my heart, I feel great about what I did. Uh, number one, the people there were so excited to speak with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm from Chicago. I get along with every race. I know I say it a lot. There's a lot of people that say it. And then they'll criticize me or something. But yet they say they you know, get along with every race. No, I, I really do. I went to public uh, grade school. And uh, a diverse, you know, private high school. Never have had uh, stereotypes on anyone for anything. You know, I, out, I always knew the person I was inside and some of uh, my actions and how they made, made me look. So at times, so I know not to judge someone or end, uh, especially a whole race of people on uh, some preconceived false notion. <laughs> you know, it's that simple. So we have to get, a, get over that because these people are great people. And they're being pushed and pushed, whether they're white, black, Hispanic, uh, anything, anything. It's sad. And, and, and why, I'm going to have to announce this now, but I, uh, like I said, I got the park in the parking lot there. I talked to, let's just say, a uh, district attorney. They're going to probably... It's going to happen Friday. It's going to happen Friday. After Thanksgiving. And uh, I just pray that, that the community holds together. That they stand strong. And I encourage people uh, with the concealed carry to, to you know, strap up. Go out on the streets and protect your community's infrastructure. Because everyone I spoke with said the people that were doing the looting... We're not even from Ferguson. Protect your community. And, and please don't don't fire the first shot. Please don't fire the first shot. Please do not kill another two, three, four people. Please do not use a weapon that's banned in warfare against United States citizens. Please, because you don't realize that they want you dead too. They want the Civil War to wipe out the military, to wipe out the police, wipe out people like me that are willing to go down, put my neck on the line, do whatever it takes to help people. Where are the enemies? The Alex Joneses of the world, the Joe Biggs. Uh, Jakari Jackson, Seth Davis, people that may have made mistakes. No one's perfect. Oh, I made plenty. But when it, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a changed person from when I was younger, and everyone needs to gradually grow. But I gradually grew and realized that there's so many bigger issues, and then I started. You know, becoming an activist and actually having an impact on these issues. Well, people, we need to be activists. We need to demand that they withdraw. Because I'm talking, this was military there. This, these guys were either fresh off of tours or active military. And, and that's sad. Because uh, these people in Ferguson did nothing. And the geography allows them to be locked in without food, without water, maybe, you know? 
it's not the most uh, wealthy neighborhood. They can't stock up. They don't know when to, it's going to even happen. They, the police do not even have the decency to give out a damn date. So, how can they prepare them that far in advance? They might have been preparing for two weeks already. MyPatriotSupply.com would go bankrupt. <laughs> Not bankrupt, it would be sold out if uh, you listen to the news. And I encourage you not to listen to the news because I was there. There is no Fox, there is no CPS, there is nothing. Yet they're sitting here in New York, in New York, telling you that there's racial tension. And yeah, there's other reports, and you know what? Maybe there were a few incidents. I really wouldn't shock me. And the reason that would, wouldn't shock me is because they're agging it on. They're instigating the situation. And the, um, everyone has to vent their anger, I guess. The police do it by picking on the civilians. The civilians. Do it by, I guess, apparently beating up white people, which, again, I did not see any of that. And I think that is just made up to get the police pissed to stir off the fight again. Because I'm telling you right now, most humble, nice, generous people, I would live in Ferguson if it wasn't for this. I would, I would buy a house. It's that type of community. It's a good place. So it makes me it makes me sick. Not far from my house here in Chicago. Not far. Similar kind of you know neighborhoods too. That there's literally like one event that could trigger a civil war between the police and a community. An entire community. And, and that's scary, people. That's scary. And that's why they want the guns. And the reason I say bring the guns is I think the tattoo shops and the, the, the stats uh, speak for themselves. Every shop that was protected by, you know, the right to bear arms and had security out for the owners with their assault rifles, their pistols, whatever it was, guess what? The looters were moving on. And I, I don't think we're going to see that this time. Because the community knows now. I think you might see more fights in, in the community though. Because there's going to be people getting rid of the looters. Doing the cops jobs for them. That's, that's my opinion. That's, that's what I really think. That's how fed up the people of Ferguson are with this joke police state. That... They're forced to live in. They're just like you and I. They deserve to be able to go get whatever food they want, leave their town, hell. They have them trapped in there, just waiting to trigger the riots. And then that the business is closed, no one comes back in. And who gets hurt? The people of Ferguson economically. The business owners who have insurance. Really don't lose out. Those in Ferguson without insurance do. And imagine just complete destruction. Who's going to want to come back? There's going to be a lot of people moving. How do you think that does to businesses? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it makes me sick. Because it, to me, this is like sad. This is, this is sabotage. It's siege. Siege warfare. That's really what it is. Uh, I don't know what they may be because of the Mississippi River. I, I don't know if there's a military base there. But for some reason, something's telling me that they want to trigger a major event there because of the strategic importance of the area because why else did they pick Ferguson and do drills a year prior to this happening uh just out of nowhere they pick Ferguson. no there has to be something i think it's pretty much how there's only one way in and one way out
was this book, the FEMA camp. And I told a lot of people there about uh, rap artist Kay Reno, and you, you know, criticize me if you want for, uh, you know, preaching the word, but, you know, I, I know Alex Jones tends to disagree, but there are some good people in rap, and Kay Reno's one. And I, if you're listening to this and you're an InfoWars fan, uh, I tried, try to reach out and get a, you know, call Alex, email him, try to get Kay Reno on there. Because that guy is a genius, and I ain't told everyone. He wrote the song House of the Enemy, it's titled House of the Enemy. And it's about Ferguson, and I think it hits the nail on the head, and he alludes to the fact that he believes that it's uh, almost like a test ish but real FEMA camp and most of his music Grand Deception all his songs are great you know they're just great and for everyone looking for the next Tupac or looking for a not talented rapper who's talking about things who's going against drugs he doesn't smoke he doesn't drink that's Kay Rena <laughs> nobody could touch him he uh, dissed on and on and on and on and and said nothing bad. And then you can't shut that guy up if you try. So he's afraid. So my point being, this guy's so talented, but he speaks about the New World Order, the Federal Reserve, the Bushes, and uh, the length of the Nazis. And you name it, He Alex Jones talked about it, he raps about it. He's very well educated. So I was promoting Kay Reno out there a lot because there's a, the ending of the song goes, we must uh, soon unify, or soon we must unify, or we'll uh, pretty much be sure to die. That's probably not exactly how it goes. Like I said, it's been a long day um, and yesterday and with the drive and, uh, and my mom's going for surgery actually tomorrow. And I had to take her today early to the doctor as well. But that, that K uh, Reno verse just, you know, hits it. It's nail mad. We must unify soon because we're running out of time. It's like four minutes left in the fourth quarter. And we got two timeouts. And we're down by 10 on our own 20. We need a touchdown. Onside kick, recovery, and touchdown. To use a football analogy. And has that happened? Yeah. Is it likely? No. Especially if the people playing on the kickoff team or playing on the losing team don't believe they can do it. But I'll tell you what I saw in Ferguson. People, I saw belief. I saw people that that uh, had enough and were going to stand their ground like Clive and Bundy. And I wish I could be there right now. I feel guilty every other minute. Financially, I can't do it. And with my mom's health, I can't. I can't do it. I want. I wish I, I could be with Joe Biggs and Jakari on the front lines again. Because those people are worth fighting for. They're more awake when it comes to the new world order, to the military industrial complex. Huh. I mean, I even got learned some things out there. And I'm out here in Chicago and you bring up new world order and I think it's Hulk Hogan and Kevin Nash. Yeah, the wrestlers. Yeah, that, that's the new world order to them. You go to Ferguson and they break down what's really going on. So that gave me so much hope, man. I mean, it's unbelievable that you could be five hours away and you got a very lost group, which I'm working my, my butt off to wake people up, up Chicago up. I mean, think about it. We have never had a big terrorist attack. We've, we've never had a huge tragedy or 
for the most part, Chicago is one of the safest places in the country, if not the world. With the you know abundance of fresh water, you can't get hit by tornadoes here. Really, there's no tsunamis. I mean, earthquake. I mean, none of that. Yeah, and and people just don't care. They just want to go to the bar, drink, watch the bears, and uh, not think about what's going. I'm just five hours south of here. And to me that's sad. Because I used to be like that. I, I used to coach football. And uh, I probably wouldn't even have heard of Ferguson. If I was still coaching football. But God put me on this path. Uh, it started with uh, Jesse Ventura. Petition. And uh, you know God. Uh, God definitely. Help me write the petition, uh, which I, you know, help and in any kind of intervention in Syria, and that was mainly the military guys. But they signed the petition I wrote. I'm not trying to take credit for it, but that woke me up to the fact that hey, I could change something. And I'm gonna tell you, I feel extremely good about what I did out there in Ferguson for the relations of the people. Whether it be Christian talking to a Muslim, a white talking to a black, whether it be a, a, a Hispanic person talking to myself, a white person. I, I broke the ice with them. I talked to everyone. I treated everybody the way I would want to be treated. And I was myself. And these people are great people. I could walk around Chicago ask uh, someone to uh, do an interview and get shot. We lose a person one day, uh, at least like once a week here from uh, gang violence, but no one gives a crap. Why is that? Why is Chicago just degenerated to the point where we're accepting the annihilation of the, the black race due to gang activity? And why do the police let it happen? Why do the police ship the drugs in? Think about it. If we actually got good guys, and I know that's hard because people can be two-faced, but real people in office ended the war on drugs, got a real president in, put the money back into infrastructure, put it back in the roads, put it back into the people's pocket. Not for some prostitute for Rob Blagojevich or Rahm Emanuel. And how about we own our actual toll booths that are $2 to every two miles? No, Spain does, Germany. Uh, how about we own our own parking meters? We own. So, you, I mean, you got to think about it. We're getting raped here. And we don't even realize it because we don't care. And it's not like we even have good sports teams anymore, people. And you need to wake up and have the realization I did. Coaching, football is a good escape. But you're not, but you're having an impact on kids. And that's why I did it. But you're not having much of an impact on kids. You're really not. You're, you're teaching them how to play a game at the end of the day and and the message I'm trying to stress in this the segment of the truth is stranger than fiction is huh jump in the, the, the game of life there's nothing more fulfilling than <laughs> go driving six hours to Ferguson not knowing what to expect go meeting up with Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson and meeting the guys at Infowars and getting ready, you know, because we thought pepper spray and all that, but, and it never happened. And then just getting to know the people was just so amazing. I, I mean, I know I keep saying that, but it's hard to believe that uh, all, after everything done out there, all those uh, strong, strong people at Ferguson were able to, to stick together. And, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, live through this torture of every day not knowing when all hell's gonna break loose, and that's that's a bad feeling.
and you know you don't know if you get up to tomorrow if your whole front lawn's going to be filled with people and your windows burnt you don't know so the fear they're making living is not fair so we as a society we as members of whatever state you're in illinois missouri how taxes Alaska, I don't care. Start writing to your elected officials. Start, you know, do something. Come, you got to do something. Do a petition. Get signatures. Basically, let's make the police end their militarization. Let's take away the tanks. Let's take away the Nazi uniforms and shields and this. And let's go back to classic police work. Because there's some great cops and, and detectives as well, geniuses. But we're bringing in the Gestapo and the Ferguson people. Is that what we want to be remembered as America, the Fourth Reich? Because that, that is my book title. And every day, I, it's like God put it in my head for a reason. It, gets truer and truer just like this show title truth is stranger than fiction i'll tell you that but uh it's you it's just guys we got to do something i'm not gonna i can't sit here and watch innocent people get treated like the way they did over there for no reason i mean you got cops driving like 100 miles an hour on a 20 mile per hour speed limit small road you know and nothing was going on and then for two days still so they were kind of like when that lady drove up to the white house and they were all driving like maniacs yeah well that's if you want a picture in your head peace and quiet nice country land you pull up to a small town and you'll know you're there when you start seeing all sorts of different Vehicles, police vehicles moving at speeds between 80 and 100 miles an hour. Sometimes with opposite traffic and most of the time without their lights. And one protester that I saw and I was out for quite a bit was pro uh, police. 99% of the other people think there needs to be change and I agree. I agree. In today's society, we should all be equal. So, I mean, I, I don't think it should be 50 50 mandatory black and, and white firefighters. No. But 30, only 30% in a predominantly African American or black uh, neighborhood? That's not right. That's not right because then what jobs are, are left in a little town like that? And then you got to think about. The prison industry is taking away so many jobs and skilled labor jobs at that too. So all of a sudden, it's the, the tension because now the people of Ferguson can't find a job. And it's going to get worse as the businesses move out. And that's their plan. And Agenda 21, here we go. Goodbye, Illinois. <laughs> if you have no. Uh, if you don't know what Agenda 21 is, I suggest you look it up because, oh yeah, it's it's came true, it's coming true, and uh, people who live in Chicago won't be like myself, it's not much of a change, but uh, they're designating a lot of land to be strictly government land, and the world will change as we know it, and I just hope it doesn't happen there in Ferguson. People, we need to call our representatives we gotta do petitions we gotta call loved ones that are near and, and tell them to bring their cameras and go we need to go assist in journalists but if i didn't have to take my mom for surgery i'd be there i see why joe biggs is so passionate about going back those people are worth fighting for they really are. When you have people that believe in liberty, quality, freedom, and when they see a police state 
and they see the new world order just taking over and destroying everything, they stand up and they stick up for themselves. And I'm not talking about the looters. Once again, the looters came from out of town trying to take advantage and make money off of a tragedy. And to me, that's spitting on Mike uh, Brown's great. So the looters and the police are equally at fault. Who's lost in this mix? It's your small business owners, your middle class families, the people that have lived there for years and years. And what's also mixed is I want to know who the hell predicted <laughs> that there's this was going to happen. Who in the army did? I, I'd like to know what the wow numbers are because if you could do a drill one year prior to an event like this happening, you can't predict Mike Brown's going to get shot. No way. How did they know? Unless they were egging it on. And look for a gun, like I said, at 7 Eleven. It would make logic sense. It's logical to use your gun to rob 7 Eleven. It's not logical to run up to a cop with a gun. And I'm not, I wasn't there. But from what I hear, story don't make sense. I mean, if you have a gun, you're going to probably rob the store the gun. And the last thing you're probably going to want to do ever is run up to the cop with the gun and try to get into a gunfight. Who buys a blunt to smoke and get high to go on a suicide mission? Think about that. These are all things I pondered as I heard the story. Some thoughts radical and, and far out there, but sometimes you gotta do that. You gotta be like that detective Columbo. Mom, that's from you. She has had me hooked on him when I was a kid, but it's the truth. If, uh, you know, most people that smoke, uh, they get calm. And uh, they don't go run at cops with guns. They really don't. They usually run to the couch and play some video games. So, this story don't add up, people. Don't demonize the kid's character. Don't, uh, I'm not trying to demonize the cop that killed him, but I am going to say there's plenty of methods uh, you could use to uh, non lethal force to stop that. I agree with the people of Ferguson when it comes to that. I did not hear any first hand reports of any gunfights. Remember that? The gunfight? Why wasn't there any witnesses? Why did all the witnesses say he was shot at? with his hands up. Uh, I, I, it's not like one person saw it and then everyone somehow knew he said it and repeated the same story to different reporters at the same time. Or in some cases less than uh, two minutes off on separate parts of the, uh, the block. So something don't smell right. Yeah, it really doesn't, people. I, I just please pray for Ferguson, Missouri, because they got all sorts of biological, chemical weapons teams in there. I saw so many, like, like I said, active. They had to, they looked active in the military, maybe, but recently out of the service, and, and just the protesters were 51 roughly with uh, the number Joe gave at the uh, pro Mike Brown protest and the one I happened to run into of the one guy protesting uh, that he still likes the cop. So why the hell do you need all that unless you're planning something? Why are they waiting for the weather to get better? Why didn't they do it whenever it was freezing when I was there? Why? They know they're going to let him go. What are they trying to get him out of the, the state? Then 
pretty much say it on Thanksgiving during the football game. Or are they going to do it in the AMs when everyone is still sleeping after partying after Thanksgiving? Well, guess what? Pete Wicker don't drink, so he's going to be up. And if that's the case, I'm going to have to borrow some money from somebody and I'm going to get my ass down there because I'm not letting those people get stomped on and pepper sprayed and shot with rubber bullets like Joe Biggs, a reporter, and the reporter's getting arrested. I, I'm not going to stand for that as an American citizen. The reason these people are getting away with it is because the lack of nerve that the reporters have. We have no balls besides Infowars.com. Uh, there's Fox, Leeds, NBC, all of you. You have no balls. Because the simple, it's the simple. You guys used to keep our elected officials in check. And then you decided money was more important. Mm -hmm. And you took bribes. And now our elected officials are trillionaires, billionaires in office. That the little pennies they threw you for little projects on the side to fix potholes and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm okay. You really. Just, Look at Chicago. We have thousands of, of projects going on at one time. And, and Rahm Emanuel spent how much money did I get a job that only pays, what, 30000 It's the same thing out there. And the only difference is out there, they're planning to do something, I think, like along the lines of a race war out here. The rumors, a nuke. And the hacker, you know, Gucci fur, Gucci fur, I'm not exactly sure how he was pronounced been trying to look up this guy he's uh, kind of hard to find information on him. <clears throat> I encourage anyone listening or uh, who uh, gets this in replace of the show uh, tomorrow to email me at petewickard at att.net that's petewickard w-i-c-h-e-r-t at att.net and uh Pretty much give me any information on, that you can on that particular subject, anything. But, uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I just, I had to come on air and I had to get this off my chest. You know, because I got a lot going on. You know, personally, I had an operation on my mouth one time there, but uh, I mean, Danny, my, uh, you know, audio tech guy, he's sick, so I wasn't even sure if I was able to, to go in. I'm still not sure if uh, Danny's okay yet, but I couldn't even sleep last night because I had to get this off my chest. I tried doing a video off a new program and it, it didn't work, so I, I already did in a sense try to get it off my chest. And still not. I feel guilty for not being there. And I just hope everyone acts responsibly. Just it's like a, another Bundy Ranch type thing. Let's make the Nazi police force. That's what they are. That's what our police is turned into. And the Department of Homeland Security, who I seen there, let's make them look like the bad people. Because that's how you win the propaganda war. That's how you win the hearts and minds of the people. And I'm not saying this in a sinister way. We're just exposing the criminals for who they are. So, and to quote Jesus, if they slap you on one cheek, turn the other. But to add something, get your camera and record it. But I encourage anyone who's close to me, get up, go to Ferguson, uh, get a hotel room, and, and go there and stick up to the people. You know why? Because I believe in karma. I'm a Christian. It might be called something else in Christianity, but good deeds tend to come back. And I've had such a, a, a peaceful feeling and such a feeling of I, I wish I could do more. But if you go down there, you may be, be able to prevent this. You single-handedly. It could be your camera that stops the next officer from shooting somebody. 
It could be your camera that stops one of the members of the media from getting, you know, arrested again. So, this is Pete Wickard, and uh, again, uh, and, uh, I'm going to ask uh, everybody to pray for my mom. Uh, it's nothing major, nothing major. It's a, a catheter thing, but could, you know, there's always side effects. And, and she's all I have left, so I'm nervous. And thank you for your thoughts and prayers and emails. And, I wish I could, uh, you know, answer some questions you guys had. They were great, but like I said, the camera messed up. I, I, you know, I witnessed a bad car wreck. I actually got, I was within two, uh, two feet from totaling my car at the desk. And you could see my lip here. It uh, would have been a lot worse. I actually. Could, I think uh, I might have actually gotten you know, concussed. Uh, so I probably shouldn't have came on here, but I told I just poured my heart out because the people of Ferguson need you. And if you were in their shoes, you know, Chicago, Illinois, that uh, and we were locked down for some crap, I would hope that people from other states would come. I would hope our brothers and sisters from Wisconsin would come. I would hope our brothers and sisters from Indiana would come. And I'm hoping the same thing happens in Ferguson. Because we owe them that, people. I'm telling you right now, the police are out of control. And if we don't stop it soon, you're next. This was The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. And I'm Pete Wicker. And thank you for all your support. And I'm going to be uh, probably doing another show uh, when I get back from uh, picking up my mom uh, tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow or maybe even later if there's any breaking news. Email me your questions at PeteWickard at ATT.net. If you'd like to see my Ferguson footage, you could go to YouTube and type Pete Wicker And you'll find my page. It's got... Most of uh, the footage, I'm about to put a few more things up actually as soon as I, I sign off here. And uh, thank you again for all your support. And wow, was, you know, thank, I'd like to thank Joe Biggs and Jakari again. You guys are awesome, man. It was cool meeting you guys. I mean, I'm telling you, they are hardworking and just like, uh, you know, seeing them on TV, man. Always on it, always working, always thinking. You, uh, great people to go to bat with, man. And I'm praying for you, Joe Higgs. I'm praying for you, Jakari. And I'm praying for everyone in Ferguson. God bless you. And may the people with righteousness come out on top.